Final Fantasy series is so full of lots of great moments, characters, themes, music, artwork, the list goes on. But one thing that's always guaranteed with these games, in my opinion, is the emotional bond you'll get with these characters throughout your journey. And I'll be honest, I'm a bit of a softy when it comes to these games, and by the time the credits roll, I'm usually in tears. So in today's video, I want to share with you a few moments throughout the Final Fantasy series and my experience with the games that actually made me cry. And no, I'm not going to rely too heavily on endings, but there will be some endings, and be warned, there are some spoilers for Final Fantasy games in this video. Now, before we get to the list, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't done so already, and leave a comment down below along the way and let me know what Final Fantasy moments made you cry as well. Let's get to the list. First up on the list is Final Fantasy VII Crisis Core. Man, I tell you what, the price of freedom is steep. This game makes me cry every time I finish it. I'll keep it brief here, but the character arc of Zack is nothing short of incredible. He starts off as kind of a an annoying little Shinra underdog soldier and quickly progresses through the ranks and eventually ends up as fugitive number one, of course, because, you know, he broke out of the research facility. Hojo was testing on him and Cloud with Mako poisoning. And there's, there's a lot of stuff that happens, especially if you're familiar with Crisis Core. So I don't want to go in depth there, but man, that ending sequence where Zack faces off against all the Shinra soldiers. The fact that the DMW fades as well while he's fighting all of the soldiers, you just know it's a battle that he can't win. And the way that it ends, when he says to Cloud, you'll live for the both of us, you'll be my living legacy. And that's really the moment where Cloud's story begins. Thankfully, a little bit cheeky here, but thankfully we get to see a little bit more Zack here in Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Next up is probably one of the most poignant moments in the Final Fantasy series. Not only is Final Fantasy V one of the more underrated games in the Final Fantasy series, it's home to one of the most important and emotional sacrifices throughout the series. I'll spare you the backstory, but Galuf is trying to save the rest of the party, and most importantly, his granddaughter, from an onslaught from X-Death. Deciding that he's had enough of the attack, he decides to pretty much solo X-Death, manages to defeat him, and only dies from pure exhaustion. It's interesting because Galuf is pretty much intimidating X-Death in this scene. X-Death is more or less a demon that is infinitely powerful, has no concept of love or compassion, and that's the driving force behind Galuf's attempt at destroying X-Death in this moment. X-Death is completely incapable of understanding the emotion that drives Galuf in this moment, and it in fact intimidates him. In my opinion, I think it's one of the very few times that X-Death truly felt fear. Galuf did one hell of a job, and honestly, one of my favorite characters in Final Fantasy. Following Galuf's last stand is Celis in Final Fantasy VI, contemplating her own existence. After the halfway point of Final Fantasy VI, the whole world is more or less destroyed. You wake up on a deserted island and you play as Celis. All of your characters that you had in your party are gone. You are alone and you are there with Sid, the scientist who serves as a father figure of sorts for Celis. At this point, Celis is really reeling, I think, from the most recent events that happened prior to the world getting destroyed. Failing to stop Kefka from destroying the world, thinking that her friends are probably all dead, and the last memory they had of her was when she kind of betrayed them. The closest thing that Celis had to any family is Sid, and depending on how you play this part of the game, you can either save him by feeding him the fastest fish to cure him, or you aren't able to save him at all. So if Sid dies, Celis literally has nothing at this point. So she decides to head to the nearest mountaintop and jump off. It's a really important point in Final Fantasy because she's lost everything and she thinks the only way out is to totally close the door on her life. And I think that this is something that can speak beyond Final Fantasy as a concept. Even if things do seem incredibly dark and there seems like there's no light at the end of the tunnel, there's always a little speck of hope. And that speck of hope is represented by after she awakes on the beach, seeing a seagull with Locke's bandana. She knows right away that it's Locke's bandana, but unfortunately never really find out whether it belonged to Locke or not. But because Celis cared about her friends, seeing that glimmer of hope was enough for her to just leave the island and continue on and eventually save the world. If you've never played this game before, it's a really shocking moment because you really don't know for that split second if she's going to survive or not. This particular scene carries a lot of weight and it's one of the reasons why, of course, I'm including it on this list because it was so shocking that a game would do something like this. It made me shed a tear for sure. 
Next up is Final Fantasy IX and the Black Mage's character arc or, or story arc. Now, it's not necessarily a, a moment, one moment that you can kind of pinpoint on, but it's just the existence of the Black Mages being tools in battle, and then some of them kind of gain sentience or self-awareness and then decide to escape to a village on the outer continent. Through their existence, the Black Mages realize that they have limited lives. Some of their friends are stopping or, or dying pretty much, and they realize that their lifespans are shorter than most. And because of that, they choose to live and be happy. The themes in Final Fantasy IX were actually quite heavy at times, and Final Fantasy IX just hit that life metaphor in a really specific way that I think about it often. And even the ending, of course, including Vivi here with the Black Mage's arc, he doesn't survive at the end. You know, you see his offspring. How they came to be, that's a whole other story, but it's a very important life lesson that I think that is buried within the Black Mages, you know, even coming down to burying their friends right in the fields, man, every time. Final Fantasy IX is an incredible game and this is one of the reasons why. After Final Fantasy IX is Final Fantasy X with one of the more iconic scenes that is right at the midway point of the game. Final Fantasy X is a really great story and it's a really great showcase for character development, especially focusing on Tidus and his journey with Yuna the Summoner, who unbeknownst to Tidus is meant to sacrifice herself at the end of her journey. And at a point in the game, Yuna is sitting in a lake, crying to herself, feeling overwhelmed with emotions. And you kind of had this sense that, you know, these two people kind of like each other, but Yuna, I think, wanted to show a restraint because she knew that her journey ends in sacrifice. And Titus has a, a lot of great character development, I think, especially with the maturation of his character, being somebody who is kind of like the player experiencing Spira for the first time. And it's very powerful seeing him grow from this kind of like, you know, uh, very arrogant, loudmouth guy from this moment onwards, feeling very mature, very cool, and very almost kind of in control of his destiny, you know, as, as much as he can be anyway. So in a very powerful moment, Titus leans in and kisses Yuna. And of course, it's really important because it sets the stage for the climax of the game as well. I still watch the scene every now and again. And it's one of those scenes that back in the day, watching this as a kid, oh man, I welled up with tears just because I was so in love with these characters, being in love with each other against all odds. Another point to Titus's character growth here is something that I don't think that he would have done initially if his journey hadn't matured him, is leaning in for a romantic moment with Yuna, trying to have her understand that, you know, words maybe can't help her, but maybe emotions can, and an emotional bonding here through a kiss, which, you know what, I think it was a very warm and romantic gesture, and one of the more timeless moments in Final Fantasy. Now, a quick little bonus to that scene is in Final Fantasy X-2. If you played Final Fantasy X, you know at the very end of the game that Titus disappears. Of course, for many, many reasons that I'm not going to get into in this video. But, oh man, the ending of Final Fantasy X-2. I'm, I'm, I'm rewatching this scene here and I'm, I'm crying over it. Oh man, just that moment where, where Titus at the very end. I'm seeing Yuna again for the first time after not knowing if he'd be able to come back and saying I'm home is just a total tearjerker. This is a scene that I was never able to actually you know, complete the game to that point to where I would be rewarded with the cutscene. But I remember looking it up on, you know, the very primitive internet mid 2000s and seeing this cutscene and just bawling my eyes out. And it's a scene that I watch every now and again, and it always takes me off guard emotionally. It's such a great and important moment in Final Fantasy. And I'm, I hate to use the word, but I'm such a simp for Tina Sunuda. <laughs> Last but not least is the ending sequences of Final Fantasy 16. Now, major spoilers if you have not played Final Fantasy 16, but Clive's journey throughout the entire game is all about loss and how he deals with that. And his last little bit of his journey is no different. In fact, it probably has the biggest loss at that point. Dion kind of pretty much sacrificing himself so Joshua and Clive can go into the final boss area. And then Joshua dies at the hands of Ultima. And Clive, so angry, destroys Ultima. And in doing so, essentially it's alluded to him dying on the shores of a beach. The thing that really just rips me to shreds for this ending is Jill's reaction, knowing that if this particular star goes out or if this moon goes out, it means that Clive is no longer there. It doesn't say 
explicitly whether or not Clive actually dies or not, but I think it's heavily alluded to, and it's one of those endings that's really up to your interpretation. But Final Fantasy 16 is one hell of an emotional roller coaster, and that ending really just sealed the deal for me, anyway. Being an incredible story, but just that ending really just ripped me to shreds, man. Great. Great, great storytelling in this game. So there you have it. There's my list of Final Fantasy moments that made me cry. And as a bonus, you actually got to see me cry during the video. I'm a softy. I get emotional during these games. I love these characters. I'm connected to the series and I do get connected and bonded to these characters as I progress throughout the journeys with them. Why wouldn't I cry? So I hope you liked this episode. Please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't done so already and leave a comment down below. Let me know your emotionally charged moments throughout Final Fantasy. I'd really be interested to see if you agree with some of mine or you have some unique spins on emotional moments for you as well so anyway thank you so much for watching today really appreciate you hanging around and we'll see you again on the next video ta-da